Okay, shalom everyone. I'd like to start out saying all praises to Ahaya Ashar Ahaya, Bahasham, Aman Nawa Allah, Bawarwak, or like or like some would say uh Chakma for the Holy Spirit. But I just wanted to start out with uh bringing out some more information concerning the name of the Messiah. <clears throat> and I'm sure uh some of you have already watched some of the previous videos breaking that down. But I want to get some more information um, out of Donovan Bible Dictionary. And uh, this information is just uh, also uh, confirming a lot of the uh, uh, information I brought out through the scripture and through uh, uh, research uh, concerning uh the name of the messiah and also who was deemed the savior according to scripture so we're going to go ahead and jump into uh, the zondervan and we're going to go to savior which is on page one moment page 526 and we're just going to read some information concerning uh who was the savior because a lot of people are saying that nope the uh well not a lot of people <laughs> a few people are saying that the name is not um emmanuel or aman nawa'ala and it is yasha meaning to save or deliver and the term, uh, the title, or the, the supposed name of Yeshaya being used is, uh, um, by some is referring to my savior, or if you were to take it by uh, Yah, meaning God or powers, uh, Yasha, Yah, um, meaning the savior God. Okay, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, and uh, talk about that more in a little bit, but let's go ahead and read this here. So, Savior, I'm going to go through this real quick. So, if you have a Zondervan's, go ahead and crack it out. Read along with me. Uh, Savior. Savior, deliverer, preserver. One who saves, delivers, or preserves from any evil or danger, whether physical or spiritual, temporal or internal. A basic Old Testament concept is that God is the deliverer of his people. It is also emphatically declared that a man cannot save himself and that Jehovah, it says Jehovah here, we know this is not the name, it should be Ahia, alone is the savior. So let's reread that in the correct uh, terminology that which should be there. It is emphatically declared that man cannot save himself and that Ahia alone is the savior. The reference here is Psalms 44, verse 3 and verse 7, Isaiah uh, 43, verse 11, uh, Isaiah 45 and 21, Isaiah 60 and 16, Jeremiah 14 and 8, and Hosea 13 and 4. In the Old Testament, the term is not applied to the Messiah. He receives salvation from the Most High. References there, Psalms 28 and 8, Psalms 144 and 10, 2 Samuel 22 and 51. But he comes to offer salvation to all. Zechariah 9 and 9, Isaiah 49 and 6 and 8, etc. The term is also applied to men who are used as the instruments of the most highest deliverance according to judges 3 and 9 and 15 uh second kings 13 and 5 nehemiah 9 and 27 obadiah chapter 21 in the new testament it is never applied to a mere man it is used of both the most high the father and Christ the Son, or Messiah the Son. 
God the Father is Savior, for he is the author of our salvation, which he provided through the Messiah. Luke 1 and 47, 1 Timothy 1 and 1, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 3, 1 Timothy 4 and 10, Titus 1 and 3, 2 and 10, Titus 3 and 4, Jude chapter 25. Savior is a preeminently title to the Son. Title. Savior is a title to the Son. Titus um, 1 and 4, 2 and 13, 3 and 6, 2 Timothy 1 and 10, 2 Peter 1 and 1, 11, 2 Peter 2 and 20, 2 Peter 3 and 2, 2 Peter 18, 1 John 4 and 10. At his birth, the angel announced him as a savior, who is the Messiah, Luke 2 and 11. His mission is to save his people from their sins, was announced before birth, Matthew 1 and 21. And he is stated by, and it says here, Jesus, which should be Emmanuel, as the aim of his coming, Luke 9 and and 10. The salvation which he wrought is for all mankind, and he is Savior of the world. 1 John 4 and 14, John 4 and 42, and he shall come again to consummate our salvation in the transformation of our bodies. Uh, Philippians 3 and 20. Let's see here. So, The Most High sent his son to offer salvation unto his people. Okay. As we went through in the previous lessons, um, we went through the scriptures to prove that the Most High is the Savior and none else beside him. Okay. He is fulfilling his will through his right hand, his son, the Messiah, which is a good segue into this next part where we're going to break down some more information concerning the right hand of the Most High. Now, uh, some may be using uh, amen, as the name of the Messiah, but according to scripture, um, in the lesson, you can watch, uh, uh, the name of the Messiah part eight and part nine, I believe. And we broke down amen or amen very thoroughly. And it does not only mean, um, so be it. It also means, um, the right hand, um, of the most high or the right hand or sits on the right hand okay so we're going to get some more understanding on why that is a title and the importance of that title the right hand okay so first we're going to jump to um we're going to jump to psalms uh, 137 in verse 6. A moment here. And we're going to break this down. Uh, we're going to break down the point of why the mark of the beast is being, is it, is, um, attempted to be put in the right hand and the forehead versus the most high's laws and righteousness in thy right hand and in thy forehead, okay? So Psalms 137, we're gonna read verse six. Okay. We're gonna start with verse five. 
If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the root of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. So if we're not preferring uh, Jerusalem above our chief joy. If we prefer not Jerusalem above our chief joy, it's like we ain't talking straight. It's like your tongue is kick to the roof of your mouth. You're incoherent. Okay. Verse five, it says, if I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. So what is the cunning that's in the right hand? Is that the law? Okay, we'll find out. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter nine, verse four. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay. So we're going to jump to Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them and shined forth from Mount Paran. And he came with 10,000 of saints from his right hand went a fiery law for them. So the law is in our right hand. Who is the way, the truth and the light? Who is the deliverer of the law? The Messiah, the Most High Son, who sits at the right hand of the Most High. So we're going to get some more scriptures to prove that as well, too. So next, we're going to go ahead and go jump to, um, uh, we're going to jump to Revelation, and we're going to go to Revelation 7 and 3. Okay. Give me a moment here. saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. Okay. And you can read on and it tells you who was sealed and how many from each tribe. We're going to go to Revelation 9 and 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the most high power in their foreheads. Okay. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount of Sion. And with him, 144,000, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. So, why is the law being in our right hand and the name of the Most High and the understanding in our foreheads? It's, it's because it prevents us from getting the mark of the beast in our right hands and in our foreheads. Let's read it. Revelation 13, 16. It's 11 o'clock. It is. And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So, the fallen one, Lucifer, Satan, is attempting to get his mark in our right hands, in our foreheads, versus the Most High's law being in our right hand and the understanding and the name being in our foreheads. Okay? So that is the significance of the mark of the beast, not just 
with it being an RFID chip. Now, along the lines of that RFID chip, also they are attempting to make some kind of a, uh, some kind of chemical or vaccine or some kind of concoction that they're doing to cause you to have a lack of spirituality. Some of you might have seen that video um, that they were trying to come up with. Is it possible that that whatever they're doing with that is going to be in that chip that they're going to implant with people? Um, that is a possibility. So we'll be looking out for that. We're going to read Revelation 20 and verse 4. And I saw the thrones and they that sat upon them and judgments was, judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witnesses of Emmanuel and for the word of the Most High, for which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their right hands. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Okay, so we just went through uh, scriptures and broke down the significance of the law being in the right hand and the understanding of the Most High and his name in our foreheads versus the mark of the beast being in our right hand and and or in our foreheads. Okay, so now um let's jump on to uh something else here i wanted to go to um let's read psalm 16 and 8 we're going to stick in psalms real quick and we're going to get the understanding of the significance of a man being a uh, right hand okay so we're going to go to psalm 16 and 8 I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Okay. We're going to jump to Mark 12 and 36. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said unto said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay. We're going to go back to Psalms, Psalms 110 and 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay. We're going to go to Matthew 22 and 4. I know we're jumping around here, but write these scriptures down. Matthew 22 and verse 44. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So these are the same scriptures in the Old Testament and New Testament concerning the right hand um, of the Most High. Okay? And we know who is on the right hand of the Most High. That is Messiah. Let's prove that a little further. We're going to Psalms 18. Psalms 18 and 35. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. So, who gave 
the shield of thy salvation. Who is this talking about? Let's go up a few scriptures. As for the Most High, his ways is perfect, and the way of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all that trust in him. For who is the Most High save the Lord? And who is the rock of our power? It is the Most High that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places and teacheth my hands to war so that the bow of steel is broken in mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and the right hand hath holden me up and thy gentleness hath made me great. Okay. We are going to, let's go to Psalm 21 real quick. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. All right, read the rest of that on your own. We're going to Psalms 48 and 10. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. All right, we're going to Psalm 60 and 5. That thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand hand and hear me. Okay. Psalms 89, 13. Thou has a mighty arm, strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Okay. We're going to 108 and 6, saying in Psalms. That thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand, and answer me. Okay, we're going to Psalms 110, 5, back to 110. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Okay. Going to Psalms 118 and 16. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Okay. We're going to Job 40 and 14. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Okay. Ecclesiastes. We're going to Ecclesiastes 10 and 2. A wise man heart, a wise man's heart is in is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. We're going to Isaiah 41 and 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. We're going to Hebrews. Ten and twelve. But this man, after he had offered offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of the Most High. And we're going to First Peter three and twenty two. Who 
who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of the Most High, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Okay. Now we're going to read, we're going to jump finally, going into Revelation. Well, first, let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark 14 and 62. I, Emmanuel said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Okay. Now we're going to go to Revelation 1. Revelation 1 and 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Revelation 1 and 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. We're going to read verse 18. I am he that liveth and, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Okay, we're going to read Revelation, we're going to jump down to 20. The mystery of the seven stars that thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Read Revelation 2 and 1, continuing. And unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Okay? And lastly, we're going to sum it out with Revelation 3 and 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodosians write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning and the creation of the Most High. And you know who that is. That's the Messiah. So this title here, Amen, we broke it down in the name of the Messiah, uh, part eight and part nine. It references the right hand, the right hand, okay? Right hand of the most high, to the right. So, I hope you got some understanding from those scriptures there. Um, again, we tackled the... Uh, we went to the Zondervans and we went to Savior and broke down who is the Savior according to Scripture. Okay. So in uh when some go to uh Luke uh, uh Luke one and Luke two and they try to say that the, the Messiah is alone the Savior, that is incorrect. Um and even they brought that out in the Zondervans. I mean we went through that through scripture before, and it's just clear in scripture. So if you are denouncing the name Imanawa Allah, we went to several references and proved that that is the name. We proved the deception in the scripture. We proved what the Mazarists did. We proved what words they changed. They, we proved that uh, they attempted to, um, the change that they made was so that they can push um, the relevancy of a virgin birth, a a uh, a woman that did not uh, uh, conceive with man to bring forth a child. They tried to push that there, so they changed it, and they tried to take the focus off of the prophecy which the Messiah gave himself concerning what you should call him. Okay? That gave them weight. Well, in trickery, it gave them weight to try to put Jesus in uh, in Matthew 1. Okay? So, we proved that. 
We proved in the criminal caves that Emmanuel is one word, which signifies a name and not two as they changed it in the Masoretic Scrolls, saying Emmanuel, where they put the space. Okay? So if you're confused on any of that, you can still go back through the videos and watch the name of the Messiah and uh, watch also um, um, the series, uh, How They Change the Name. Okay? Because it's very clear and very easy to understand. Okay? Also, it was proven that, um, as, it, as it mentioned in the Zondervans, back in the Old Testament time, um, that the Most High was the Savior. Now, the nations were calling on their own savior gods from the Babylonians to the Persians to the Chaldean, Chaldeans to the Hemurites. They were all calling on their own savior gods, right? So the word Yesha, Yah, means savior God. You can break it down to my savior, but th there's nowhere in scripture where he says you should call him my savior as a name. Okay. Amen. Amen. Title. It means to the right hand of the most high. Okay. So I hope you got some understanding from that. Um, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask me and uh, stay tuned as we bring out some more information um, concerning uh, uh more information concerning the scriptures and uh, things that some missed according to scripture. And another thing, sorry about that. Now, if Yeshia, right, was the name of the Messiah, and that's the Hebrew, what were they calling him in the New Testament? Or they call him Sorter in the Greek? Because that's what that is in the Greek. So that's something that you would have to uh, answer on your own. So um, if anyone is uh, denouncing uh, or continuing to denounce the name um, Emmanuel, which is Hebrew, which is the modern Hebrew, Amanawa Allah, which is the ancient Hebrew, Emmanuel, um, which is the Greek with the E. Um, okay, so if they're continuing to denounce that as the name, then you have a lack of study. That's all I can say about that. Um, to those that uh, have, um, you notice that when people are trying to break this down, they're trying to say that that's not the name of the Messiah, they bring nothing to back it up. Zero. They won't touch the subject. Silence. Or they'll just say, no, that's not it. Well, can you prove that? Because prove all things. No prophecy is any private interpretation. So my route is to go ahead and present the information fully so you can read it for yourself and see it versus just saying, no, nah, no, nah, that's not, no, nah, that's not, no, 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 it don't work like that. So um, those that are denouncing the name, they have the information that I sent them. They have the full breakdown and they have the videos as reference. So um, just a warning out there to those that um, if someone is trying to tell you something or trying to get you to understand something, they need to show you and they need to break it down and they need to, uh, um, it needs to be verified. Okay. Um, do not listen to those that just will tell you one thing and then try to switch the subject, switch the subject or just get off the subject in itself. Um, that's just bringing mass confusion. Okay. Now, if, like I said, if you want to call on the name Yeshia as for the Messiah, then that's up to you. I have no quarrel with you. 
then do your thing. But truth is truth. Uh, scripture is scripture. The word is the word. Information is information. Um, and it's there for you to make your own decisions. Don't let someone make a decision for you just because you think that they are sound in the truth. Okay? Because when it when when push comes to shove, they will say, I don't know that person. I don't know this person. I don't know him. Right? You need to be the same way towards them. You don't know them. Okay? You don't know me. Just because you see a video, li listen, you don't know me. Just because you see a video of someone else, listen, you don't know them. Do not trust people that you don't know. Unless they are bringing the information out so you can read it on your own and get the information on your own, trust that. That's all I got to say. You have a good day. Sure.